Hello everybody and welcome to Provost Gaming and another Hearts of Iron 4 series, now with the Man the Guns expansion, which of course revamps naval warfare, adds in fuel, new national focus trees and so on. It, uh, it looks pretty exciting and I'm looking forward to getting started with it. We're going to be playing as the United Kingdom for this run. Why? Well, because this is a naval themed expansion and Britannia rules the frickin' waves, so need I say more. But... By a happy coincidence, Paradox has decided to revamp the United Kingdom focus tree. There actually are a lot of alternate history routes, including a communist route, a fascist route, uh, an alternate democracy route where you can ultimately decolonize the uh, British Empire. Don't know why you'd want to do that. And also an unaligned monarchist route, which I'm looking forward to because it kind of breaks up the, uh, the British Empire and then we get to reforge it in our own image. It's going to be amazing, so let's get started. Now, one additional feature we're going to play with in the Man the Guns expansion our custom game rules. You actually can now determine which uh, national focus path the AI is going to be using in this campaign. So for example, Germany, we can tell them to go down the Restore the Kaiser route, which we're going to go ahead and do because if we're going to already go down a monarchist United Kingdom route, let's go for a monarchist uh, German Reich route. That could be kind of fun. So they're going to go down the German Civil War, try to knock Hitler out of power, and then restore Wilhelm II into, uh, into the Emperor ship. Whatever, that was smooth as heck. We're also going to go for the random Soviet Union, the random Japan route. Uh, France, I'd like you to go down the French commune route. And uh, I'm going to say let's go with the United States and do an alternate history democratic route. I'm not sure if this will lead to the new civil war option that can occur in the United States. I have no idea, but I'm looking forward to finding out for sure. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the game. Now, of course, the first couple years of the game will be focused on building up our production and our war machine in preparation for a world war. Of course, with uh, Germany going down a completely different path, I have no idea if we are going to go down a world war. Uh, what I think will end up happening is probably the Soviet Union will continue to be communist, and they're going to pair up with the French. And then we're going to find the Germans and the British uh, against the Russians and the French. I imagine that's what's going to happen, but we have to find out as we play, because I'm really not sure what to expect here. Uh, for the national focus, now we can go down... Well, first off, real quick, we can revisit colonial policy, and ultimately this is going to lead to the decolonization route, which is interesting. And apparently, uh, you have to do this if you go down the communist route, or else there will be a civil war, which is really interesting. But anyway, we're going to go down a change in course. This leads to the King's Party, which is an unaligned route, the fascist route with the black shirts, and the communist route with the trade unions. For now, it will get me some extra political power, weekly war support, and support for all three of those uh, ideologies. Now, how are we going to ultimately become a monarchist party? Currently, we have uh, Stanley Baldwin as the prime minister, but I want to kick him out and put myself as the head of the government. I think we are currently led by King Edward. I don't remember which number that is. But if you guys remember your history, in 1936, there was a constitutional crisis in the UK where King Edward wanted to marry an American woman named, I think it was Wallace Simpson, who had already been once divorced and was already in the process of getting her second divorce at the time all this kind of affair broke out. It was quite the scandal. And ultimately, King Edward stepped down and abdicated the throne in favor of his brother, King George VI, I think it was? If you guys have watched the movie The King's Speech, that's actually central to the plot, and that is, uh, that's historically how things went down. In our case, though, we are going to frickin' marry Wallace Simpson. We are going to weather the storm of this constitutional crisis, and if Parliament decides to resign, so frickin' be it. I will install a new party of loyalists, and I will run the country. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of uh, consequences for doing that. The Dominions are going to want to break free. It's going to be kind of fun. Let's see if we can pull through. Starting off with four research slots is kind of nice as Britain, so we're going to go for our basic machine tools and construction. We could go for synthetic oil. Uh, so we can start producing oil and fuel early on, because we know we are going to ultimately need this. This is very important now, but I'm not sure we are prioritizing that at the moment. Let's go for the mechanical computing for the extra research speed, since we do start off with the electrical mechanical engineering. Uh, and for our infantry, do we want to go for support companies? We do start off with Grand Battle Plan Doctrine, which I usually don't like, but I guess we could go down this route if we wanted to. Um, I could alternatively go ahead and research the 1936 light tank, the Matilda, because I know that there's a pretty early on uh, national focus that gives me a 100% research boost toward a tank, so we could get an early medium tank if we get this pretty early on. Let's go ahead and do that and see what happens. Uh, civilian factories, I want to get at least a couple of these up front. 
Um, England actually has some pretty good infrastructure at the beginning of the game, so let's build like 10 of those. And for our military factories, we're not going to worry about the planes, I think. Let's hold off on those for now. Let's go for some extra support equipment, towed artillery, and infantry equipment so we can start training up some more troops. Now, naval um, configurations is complicated, and I can't say that I fully understand the optimal build order yet for navies. One huge change that was added into the game are variants of ships. It used to be that just like with tanks or uh, planes, you'd increase the engine or the main gun or your armor, and that just kind of tweaks some of the basic stats of your ships. Now, if you go to, let's say, the Admiral class and we do a variant, we can change out the modules of uh, all of our different ships and create several different variants for different purposes. So, for example, let's suppose we want to create a destroyer that is mostly a screening anti-airship. We could do that. We could also have two different types of submarines, one that is purely torpedoes for DPS and one that is half torpedoes and half radar for some extra detection and so on. There's a lot of different things that we can do now, and it's exceptionally complicated, and I have no idea what is best. So we're just going to kind of stumble blindly along and hope that this works. I've been trying to do some reading on Reddit, and I can't say that I am uh, that much wiser for it, but what the heck, we'll, we'll give it a shot. Uh, I do think we want to go ahead and build out some... Well, we actually have 800 convoys. Do I need more? I suppose a few extra convoys will not go amiss. Let's go ahead and just kind of keep uh, adding some extra to the pile. Unassigned divisions. Yeah, we're going to have a bunch of those. Let's get all of you guys in a group. Create a new army over here. By the way, one new thing that's been added in, the Strategic Navy map mode. You can see that there are theaters, just like there are for the armies. And each individual home command is uh, split up into different fleets and flotillas, which we can group together as much as we want. It's, it's again, complicated, and I'm not sure how best to proceed with it, but it's going to get interesting pretty quick. Uh, let's go ahead and get a general in charge with you. I guess Claude will be fine. Pretty good stats, promotion, cost reduction, better defense, and logistics. All right, we'll go with you for the time being. That seems fine. And we'll assign you to just some basic garrison orders, because, I don't know, I don't really feel like dealing with the, oh, we don't have assigned units message. It's just annoying. Uh, decisions. Demand reduced Dutch trade with Germany. That's not going to be an issue to me, because Germany is going to flip to non-aligned. Nation building in the British Raj and British Malaya. Can't say there's a lot of point to this right now. Uh, one, I don't want to spend the political power. Two, I know that all of our dominions are going to break free in the constitutional crisis, so let's not worry about that. Let's go ahead and speed up to speed five. You can see up here, by the way, our fuel. Uh, there is a fuel capacity, so you have a maximum amount that you can store before you're kind of wasting your opportunity. Every time we are using our planes or our tanks or our motorized or we're sending ships patrolling the sea, we are going to be using up some of our fuel. So we do need to be very cognizant of how much fuel we need in order to field a capital ship navy during war. For now, I'm going to let this kind of build up. In 227 days, we will be at our maximum consumption. If we find ourselves in a position where we are maxed out, then maybe it is worth getting our navy together and doing some naval drills. Spend some of that and get some free naval experience. I assume that that is a reasonable choice. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump forward for a little bit. Uh, so I don't know exactly when the constitutional crisis is going to fire, but it should be pretty early on, I would think. We should also consider getting ourselves a um, marshal, field marshal. Who do you want? Alan Brook? Max Entrenchment, your planning speed sucks. Defense Logistics, more planning speed, reassignment, planning speed, supply consumption. That seems pretty good. King George V has died. Okay. So I was wrong. We are not currently ruled by Edward, but we are about to be. His Majesty King George V, King of the United Kingdom and of the British Dominions and Emperor of India, has passed away. His quiet calm and devotion to his subjects saw the Empire through both the Great War and the Great Depression. His son will assume the mantle as King Edward VIII, but there are already concerns that he will be too independent of thought. Stanley Baldwin and Neville Chamberlain are preparing to ensure that he will accept direction from the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. We lose stability for pretty much ever, which really sucks. Uh, free dockyards. One of the reasons I didn't want to reassign all these ships is because they're already in progress with a lot of them. So why cancel progress on ships? We might as well get some free ones pretty early on. What do I want to build? I don't I don't really know. Maybe some heavy ships for now? It, I, I don't know. I don't know what's best. I really do not. I should have done more research on this, but it's hard to say for sure. There's just so much to do. 
Uh, we probably should get some colonial theaters set up. Um, we're gonna take you, move you to a new theater like so. Uh, let's see. All of you will get assigned... Well, actually, hang on. All of you will get assigned to the Brown Theater over here. You as well, and we will assign you to Garrison... I don't know, let's say the coastline. Um, maybe this, uh, a little bit of Egypt. I'm sure that's very important for us. Yeah, just do that, I guess. You can go here as well. We have a lot of colonial territories, which is very annoying because I don't like having to manage these personally, but we'll go ahead and protect Malta. Uh, we will need to protect Gibraltar as well. So let's set up a garrison order with you. Um, where else we got to go? Oh, hello. You guys can join up with Brown, and then we'll set these up like so. Uh, let's see. Hong Kong. Okay. Notice, by the way, we have a lot of fleets spread out all over the place. Managing these is going to be a pain in the butt as well. But I'm sure we can make it work. Uh, you guys join up over here. Garrison British Malaya. Uh, Sri Lanka needs a garrison. Let's do that. And that should be everybody. Okay. Wonderful. More dockyards. Let's just... Finish up, um, I guess, some submarines or something. Sure, early submarine holes. What's the skull? I don't, I don't know. Whatever, I'm sure it's important. Okay, so, King Edward, do something naughty. Want to see what happens. I think, by the way, that these icons here, these numbers, uh, represent the number of capital ships in this flotilla and the number of screening ships or light ships. So, three light ships and zero capital ships here, but up with the aircraft carrier, 11 and 47. Appears to be what we're looking at over here, which we could just go ahead and group these guys up. I think the order is supposed to be something along the lines of, uh, for every one aircraft carrier, you're supposed to have four capital ships, and for every capital ship, you should have four screening ships. That's what I've heard is the optimal setup. I have no idea if that's true. Now, we cannot go for the King's Party focus yet until King Edward has married Wallace Simpson. So for now, we are going to ignore the alternate history route. We could go for reinforcing the Empire for extra base stability, which sounds nice, eventually moving toward extra research speed and so on. Most of this, I'm not sure how much it's going to matter, because uh, I know that our Dominions are going to break free, at least temporarily. Some of this is still good, but maybe we want to go for limited rearmament for the extra civilian factories, and I think that makes the most sense. So let's go down that focus for the time being. What is this? Wait, what is this? Oh, wait, okay, yeah. So we actually do have our uh, home command set up down here in the theaters. Fascinating. I'm going to have to remember to actually jump between these two map modes more often now. Oop, finish up with these dockyards. All right, let's go for... Um... Now, it says we can't build any carriers at the moment. I'm not sure that's true. What we have to do is select a hull, right? So if we go to... No, that's module slot. What is this? Yes, okay, so this is our hull, and then we'd have to add on some modules, like, let's say, hangar space here. Um, I guess we have to do an integrated hangar, and then an integrated hangar, uh, like, deck. These are the kind of the base things that you would need in order to have a functional aircraft carrier. A place to store the planes and a place to launch the planes. If we saved this out, I think we actually would be able to start building this. But for now, we're not going to worry about it. Let's go for... Um Let's go for some con county class uh, early cruisers, I guess. So research for your naval um, production has changed completely. Now, instead of just researching a base ship, you research the hull of which you will uh, manipulate all of your modules, as we saw earlier. So if we want to go toward a better module and stuff later, or better hulls, we could do that. Uh, we also can unlock different types of weapons and improve the modules. So, for example, instead of a basic light battery, an improved light battery, and so on. Uh, we'd have to research magnetic detectors, torpedo launchers, uh, airplane catapults, depth charge throwers, sonar, so on and so forth. Not to mention, mine warfare is now a thing in the game. As far as I can tell, it's not very consequential. So I don't expect that I'll be playing with mine warfare very much, if at all. But it is a thing. You know, once you go to war, you can start laying mines in a naval region with the anticipation of doing damage to enemy ships that try to get through. If you're playing as a small nation like, let's say, the Netherlands, and you go the fascist route and you're planning on fighting England with Germany's help, then maybe that actually could be useful to you. 
Small nations with inferior navies can try using mines to great uh, effect. I assume. I don't know for absolutely sure. Let's go for... See, this is a mining ship here. I don't really care about that. We are going to go for a destroyer hull. Let's go ahead and focus a fair bit on some screening ships for the time being, at least until I can figure out what we're going to do with our capital ships. One thing that's been added into the game, by the way, I don't know if this has always been the case, but I don't think so. Naval treaties? There's the London Naval Conference, and basically what this means is it's an international agreement that uh, nations will not f start up a new arms race for the naval game, and they are not allowed to have more naval power than me, basically. Which is interesting. I've heard there are some exploits in the game where I could actually demolish my entire navy, get a lot of people to sign on to the uh, naval treaty so like everyone joins and I can kind of control the naval game from there. I'm not really sure there's much point to that, but yeah. You have to have a... You can't build like anything over... Uh, I think it's 10,000 production for your ships. We can actually confirm that. Let's see. Yeah, see the Nelson class here is blocked out. Max allowed is 10,000 because of the London Treaty. If we ever break that treaty, then we can build whatever we want. But obviously, we're not at that stage of the game. All right, we're not really letting a lot of things happen here. Germany's now embroiled in a civil war, so they finished their first thing. So there's the German military junta fighting the German Reich. Uh, I'm really hoping that they are going to win. It's kind of, it's going to kind of defeat the purpose if Hitler wins this. But uh, I think there's a good chance that Wilhelm will come back into power. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens out of that. I wouldn't mind forming a brand new faction with a monarchist Germany to counter France and the Soviet Union, and maybe eat a little bit of Italy along the way. You know, that could be kind of fun. There are some uh, national focuses that we'll have to do with our relationship with Germany, and if they are not fascist and they're my alignment or my ideology, then I feel like we could actually get away with doing a lot of cool stuff. But we'll see. Nationalist Spain has declared war on the Republican Spain, so that civil war has officially begun. Come on, where's the event? Come on, King Edward! Get involved with Wallace! You all know you want to. Uh, do we want to go for a political advisor? I don't know if we lose all of our political advisors during the constitutional crisis, so I'm not really eager to jump into this. I think what we're going to do instead is save up for a military theorist and get that extra army experience generating pretty early on. Do we want to go for the Shadow Scheme, which gives me extra military factories? Let's see, hang on. i got to read this. Grants four building slots and four military factories in total in two states when entering a war and national spirits. That sounds pretty strong. We can actually convert civilian to military factories. So what this allows me to do, I guess, is build extremely heavily in civilian factories and I'll be able to convert them later if I want to. That's interesting. We also could get some extra research bonuses for industry, which I like. Motorized army. Here's the extra armor technology I've been talking about before. Uh, I think we're going to go for the shadow... Well... This, is, this doesn't actually give me a lot of benefit at the moment because I'm not going to war. But the extra industry and research slots could certainly be nice. So I guess we'll go for that for the time being and see what happens. Again, I'm not sure how much benefit I gain from uh, going down the reinforcing of the Dominions. Because I know that no matter how much I reinforce them and how much they like me, they're going to break free. Let's go for the Military Theorist, get that extra army experience going through every day. We'll be able to change up our templates as we see fit eventually. Um, research, we're about to finish up with the basic machining tools, so we'll move on to something else. Um, I guess we can continue with the Grand Battle Plan Doctrine and just make some progress on that. Since it takes a while, Second Naval uh, Treaty has been signed, so Britain, France, Italy, Japan, and the U.S. have all agreed not to build a massive ship. This will safeguard peace better than any super battleship. Oh, I beg to differ. Super battleships are amazing. Also, I should mention we are in the Commonwealth Research, which is reducing my tech research by a significant margin. I think we lose this once the Dominions break free, which is going to be sad. I really don't know if this is the best United Kingdom path. I really don't know. It probably isn't. But I don't know. We're going to find out. Come on! Where's, where's Wallace? I want to fire off the King's Speech! Seriously, we do need to get progress with this. I'm going to need a lot of political power to make this work. Uh, so it actually might be wise for us to just kind of hold on to a lot of it instead of spending it. But again, that military experience, it's just hard to pass up on that opportunity. We could also go for things like some industrial research speed or electronic research speed, which is nice too. Probably would go for industrial, honestly, since we did get a head start with electronics this particular game. Ethiopia has been annexed by Italy. Looks like the German military junta is pushing back against the fascists, so that's making some solid progress. Construction is done. Um... Let's go for the Concentrated Industry. Because I don't expect we're going to have a lot of German bombers causing problems this particular game. 
Do I want to go for any early game naval research? No, I think I would rather go for some support companies and start researching these, like Field Hospital, and get those ready. Outdated equipment in production, you say? I think it's the tanks, so we need to change those up. To the Matilda. This is the old variant that you would have with your, um, your ship. So you can see how things have really changed in the Man the Guns expansion. It's made it a lot more complicated, and honestly, it reminds me a bit of Stellaris, but Stellaris was pretty simple and straightforward in comparison. Um, we're not going to create any variants of the Matilda. I just want to change up our production there and get better light tanks going. That way, when we do eventually create some light tank divisions, we will be able to make that work. All right, here we go. The Edward VIII Abdication Crisis. For some time, King Edward VIII has entertained hopes to marry the American Wallace Simpson. A constitutional crisis has now arisen as Mrs. Simpson is not only divorced from her previous husband, but in point of fact, still married to her current husband, presently pursuing a second divorce. General outrage has ensued on the grounds that, as king, and being the head of the Church of England, Edward cannot marry a divorcee. Or divorcee, however you say that. The king, however, has made it abundantly clear that he is very much in love with Mrs. Simpson and intends to marry her regardless of the opinions of his governments or his subjects. As such, only three options remain open to him. The British government and the governments of the Dominions have already stated that any alternative to abdication would be unacceptable, and repercussions of trying to force through a marriage, even an attempted compromise, would likely be dire, not only for Britain itself, but also for its ties to the Commonwealth. As the King's closest advisors continue their attempts to convince him, the public awaits with bated breath the resolution of this conflict between the King and his cabinets. Normally, this is where you would say, better to get King George and uh, actually have him abdicate, get better stability. We could go for a compromise with a morganatic marriage, better base stability, or sorry, we lose some base stability, 5%, but we do gain popularity of non-aligned plus 5%, which is fun. Or we can go for losing 15% base stability, gain 10% popularity with non-aligned, and lose some political power. I don't know if this leads to better options in the future, but an extra 5% popularity in non-aligned sounds nice, but it's not going to be that important to me. Or is it? I suppose the more popular you are, um, the more is the more stability you have. So, oh, in the long term, this might be better. No, but then we lose a lot of base stability. I think I'm going to go for a morganatic marriage. Uh, we'll lose 5% base stability. We'll gain some non-aligned support. And continue with our alternate history routes that will lead to a king's party. So, yes, the non-aligned party is going to continue. Nigel Battenberg is apparently the leader. Not me? I would think that I'm the leader of the Monarchist Party, but all right. So the shadow, shadow Scheme is about to finish. Excellent. Uh, now we can go for the Industrial Efforts, or we can go for Reinforce the Empire for extra base stability, which sounds nice, but I think I will go for the Industrial Effort. Speed up our research in that path a little bit. Uh, we're about to finish the Mechanical Computing, so that will give me an extra 3% research. Working Classes Support the Marriage. This is something that's going to be happening a lot until we actually do get married. Uh, we're going to have either positive or negative events where people are like, Hey, this is great, or hey, this is terrible. So in this case, the working classes are like, Woo, we're mar marrying a commoner. That sounds excellent. So we gain some base stability and more popularity and non-aligned. Or we could just abdicate. I mean, at any point we can change our mind and abdicate. But for now, sure, an extra uh, change in popularity and base stability. Sounds great. So far, we've come out ahead. It's not going to stay that way. I guarantee you a lot of people are about to get angry. But it sounds fun. Let's go to the naval map mode, take our navy, and actually go ahead and do some naval exercises. Now, you're going to see this is going to consume a lot of fuel very rapidly. We only have 50 days of fuel remaining. So if we ever bring out the full red navy, we can get an idea that it's going to consume 5.4 thousand barrels of fuel per day. Uh, which is obviously not enough. So if I do want to have this uh, navy able to stay out in the ocean permanently, we would have to get a lot more fuel uh, production. Realistically, I think the best way to play the game, though, will not be to have your navy out at all times. You'll probably want to have screening navies out, patrolling at all times, able to detect um, submarines and mines and so on, and keep the capital ships docked up until such a time that you are ready for a major engagement. At least I think that's how it is going to work. But again, a lot of things have changed. I don't know for absolute sure if that's the if that's the way we want to play it. Let's go for a little bit of extra uh, infantry equipment, some extra towed artillery, and then probably more support equipment as time goes on. Um, 
Support equipment is something I always find that I have a shortage of when we are actually ready to uh, start putting in field hospitals and so on. I'd like to have those ready to go, so we'll focus on that. I'm not going to worry about my fuel right now. I'm okay with getting the extra naval experience. See this coming in. So, in theory, if I can get up to 10, I think I would be able to start producing new carriers if I wanted to. Not sure that we do want to at the moment. Uh, if I could get some more war support and stuff, it would be nice to switch over to uh, partial mobilization. Fuel gain per oil. Interesting. So, fuel gain actually is uh, affected by your mobilization law as well. That's interesting. Good to know. Okay, okay. I, I get it. I get it, I think. Uh, Alright, do we need anything here? We could go for the fuel, um, but right now I'm still building civilian factories, so I wouldn't get any immediate advantage from that. We could go for some better naval research, or perhaps improve our artillery. I think mostly I want to just research new things that we can put into our divisions, such as logistics companies. So we're going to go for that. The newspapers are opposing the marriage. The Morning Post. How unfortunate. We lose our popularity and stability. Yeah, this is just going to keep flying back and forth, like, a lot. There's nothing we can do about it. Even so, even so, it's going to be interesting. The German military junta is doing a very good job. So it sure looks to me like the uh, German Empire will be reforming in this game, which is cool. The Soviets are going down the purge route, which makes me think that they are going to stay communist. So Soviets plus France, that's going to be its going to be a little awkward. I actually do want nationalist Spain to win then, because I don't want Republican Spain joining in a uh, new Soviet bloc. More support forms for Edward VIII. In the midst of the tremendous outrage caused by the king's decision, there are some voices rising up in support of King Edward. Though isolated from the main political parties, their names nonetheless carry weight. Winston Churchill, Oswald Mosley, Mosley, and David Lloyd George. Though tentatively at first, this grouping of unlikely political allies are beginning to find traction among the people, and following their lead, more and more dare to publicly support Edward in his decision. Thus strengthening his resolve, the king has made it clear he has no intention of changing his mind in this matter. The marriage shall go on as planned. So, Nonalign gains a lot more popularity, we gain some political support, more stability is going to start building for the next 150 days, and more support for Unaligned. We will continue with the preparations for the marriage. Eventually, we will be able to get those three major powerhouses, Churchill, uh, Lloyd George, and um, Mosley, as political advisors, and they're going to end up being pretty strong. Consumer goods factories and stability, political power gain, war support, and support for unaligned. Lots of really good stuff. And this is one of the reasons to not bothering with any political advisors at the moment. I could go for some changes in laws. Not sure I see the point of that. I think I will go for the industrial research speed. Because there's a lot that I'm going to be researching this game. We might as well stack up those early research advantages and snowball out of control if we can. Uh, but after that, I think I'm just going to save up my political power as much as I'm able to. Okay, we're running low on the fuel. Newspapers, once again, are opposing the marriage. I'm hoping to come out of this ahead, but that may not end up happening. Uh, let's take our red home command and end the naval exercises. Everyone is able to just go home. Let's start rebuilding our fuel supply. We haven't really accomplished a whole lot in this particular video, but again, this is Hearts of Iron 4. You play the lore, you read the, uh, the pop-ups, and you build up your infrastructure. It's just how things go, man. Let's see. So we are currently up to 44 available uh, civilian factories. Would love to reduce my consumer goods to make these more effective. But for now, I think, yeah, we're just going to build a lot of civilian factories. We will build more military, but for now, this should be fine. We are going to hold a radio speech. Managed to persuade the government to allow him to make a radio speech, illustrating what he refers to as his side of the story. He has expressed hopes that this will allow the people to better understand why he feels he must act as he does. It turns out it's pretty convincing. Gain power, base stability, and popularity for non-aligned. Well done. So now see, his brother had a stutter and stuff. So these are things that I also know from the King's Speech. A very good movie, by the way. I liked that one a lot. So there's our industrial effort. We're going to go for the extra research slot, and we are going to get way far ahead of time when it comes to our research. There's no reason right now to go for the uh, king's party because we aren't married. So until that happens, we can't go down the focus tree we want to. We might as well get as strong of an early game start as possible. And yeah, I'm just going to keep building this up. All right. All right. Well, this is looking promising. Um, I'm going to have to do a lot of reading, I think, on our naval composition and how this is going to work. They're probably... I, I this, at this point, I know that I, I'm starting this... Oh, gosh dang you newspapers. I know that I'm starting this series after Man the Guns has been out. 
for a good couple of um, for a good couple of weeks and such already. So I'm behind the times, but even now I'm not seeing a whole lot of really compelling guides for naval composition. If anyone knows of anything really good, let me know in the comment section down below. The German Civil War is at an end. The German military junta is over, or has taken command, and Hitler is dead. So there we go. Excellent. Well done, August von Mackesen. It'd be really funny if they formed the Holy Roman Empire. Cabinet resigns. As the king has shown no intention to listen to his government, Stanley Baldwin has seen no other solution but to dissolve it. In a statement, he says, it is evident that the cabinet cannot function without the trust of its monarch. In repeatedly discarding the unanimous advice of his ministers, it has been made clear that this advice is neither desired nor observed, and so later tonight I will meet with His Majesty to offer the resignation of the cabinet. Clearly intended as a final protest against the king's decision, it is uncertain whether it will be successful. It is also unknown who the king will announce as Stanley Baldwin's successor and when. Good riddance, we lose a lot of political power and base stability, and we have a democratic crisis a fallen government lose a ton of stability and political power gain so long as this is the thing. There it goes. Empty parliament. It's only going to get worse from here until we are able to assert control. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope that you are looking forward to this series. I know that I am. If so, then I ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment with your suggestions. Of course, subscribe and hit that notify bell if you have not already. And I will see you guys next time.